Greetings world, it's John V. Pinto, your roving realtor, bon vivant, home chef, and I figure I'm going to cook, so I might as well go live. I can't do any worse than Julia Child when she threw the chicken off the kitchen island, so hopefully I won't uh, blow up the kitchen and or ruin the dish. So uh, today we're going to make some uh, Italian uh, chili sausage with... Uh, some chopped broccoli and uh, some protein plus barilla uh, farfalle because that's what I have available so we'll get started I've got a, a five quart all clad uh, these are good they're a little bit more forgiving than the copper clads with the copper clads uh, if you turn away for a minute uh, everything in it will turn into charcoal so I'm putting in a little extra virgin olive oil for a little bit more of a lipid and uh, now we're going to do what I prefer. I, I don't like the links. I prefer uncased sausage. So there you go. We got the uncased sausage. We get a little sound effect there. And uh, this is one of my favorite tools, my little pitchfork. I can break everything apart pretty easy. I can smash potatoes, uh, tomatoes, I can lift it. So in this case, I'm gonna do some breaking up of the uncased Italian sweet sausage. Now, usually, uh, traditionally, when Italians are making these dishes with sausage, uh, they're usually parboiling the sausage, poking the sausage with some holds. Um, as the parboiled water uh, diminishes and the sausages cook, the fat renders into the water and eventually you start browning the sausages in their own fat. Uh, but in this case, uh, I prefer to do the uncased sausage. So. We'll go ahead and flip it over. I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit. I've got it on high. I've got my water boiling already, so we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. Now, when I started out today, I was thinking of doing ragu di sazicha. So we would have the sazicha sauteing. And then once I reduced it, I would just pour a can of San Marzano tomatoes. San Marzano, those are the only ones to get. Make sure they're from Italy, Sarno, or somewhere around Naples. Ellen prefers the dish with the San Marzano tomatoes to when I do it with the greens. Now, the normal recipe is not Calabrian chili pepper sausage, but um, the Italian sweet fennel sausage. But this is what I happen to have, and I actually like the Calabrian chili peppers with uh, the greens. Uh, now, generally speaking, this is a modification of a more traditional Pugliese Neapolitan Basilicata recipe from uh, southern Italy, where they do uh, broccoli rabi with uh, the sazicha. Uh, Andy Boy was the, the brand that we used to use all the time when we were kids. Now... Brooklyn Rabe is a little bit of a, an acquired taste. It can be very bitter. I feel the way you deal with the bitterness of the Brooklyn Rabe is uh, you got to chop it fairly fine. You know, still a rough chop, but, uh, you know, make sure the leaves are not that big. Uh, remove the stalks unless you're going to go through the aggravation of uh, peeling the stalks. And then saute the brooklyn rabe 
um, in the pig fat. Ultimately, when we get to that point, you'll see it. And you kind of have to saute it and cover it and steam it and beat the crap out of the Brooklyn Rabe until it's pretty much welted, wilted. And then the, the bitterness actually turns to sweetness. Uh, so we're making a little ver variation on that. On this uh, recipe today, we're doing some... Calabrian hot chili sausage instead of the fennel sausage and we're going to do uh, broccoli because that's happened to be what I had and uh, and there you have it. Also on the pasta I'm going to be using some farfalle. I usually do more of a primavera with farfalle you know, just vegetables. Um, the go-to mother of all these variations of these recipes is um, Italian sweet fennel sausage with broccoli rabi and orecchietti, the ear-shaped pasta. So we're making all kinds of little modifications on that recipe. Okay, so... Hopefully, I'm going to deglaze with a little wine here, and uh, hopefully I won't get wine all over my microphone. Jam cellars. There you go. Jam cellars. Jam cellars. Jem Sellers uh, owns uh, or has the rights to the uh, big performing arts venue above the uh, Napa Opera House where uh, the Blue Note Napa is. And they have live music at their tasting room downtown uh, next to the uh, Andaz Hotel and the Archer Hotel. So that's how Jam Sellers wound up in my uh, kitchen. So we want to get this uh, sausage uh, fairly crispy. Now, by the way, in my house back in uh, Brooklyn with uh, Mama Nancy Baroni Pinto and uh, Francesco Pinto, Frank Pinto, Chichi Pinto, my father, uh, we would never have sausage on a Friday night because then we would burn and go to hell forever for eating meat on a Friday night. Uh, usually on Friday nights uh, we would be having a, a variety of uh, seafood items, marinated anchovies and garlic, oregano, parsley, and crushed red pepper, linguine and clams, mussels marinara, mussels papate with black pepper, uh, shrimp casserole, uh, conch, uh, or spongili, a salad, octopus salad, octopus Santa Lucia, uh, and my personal favorite, which was uh, cuttlefish, asech, sepia, uh, cut into small squares, lightly breaded or lightly floured, I should say, uh, and flash calling me. Hopefully, he will not persist. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this on, turn, turn the uh, power down a little bit, turn the gas down, and uh, Grab a little Pyrex, multitasking for the leftovers. That way I don't have to use a lot of different bowls.
So you reserve the sausage. I think we got that sausage sufficiently crispy. So now we have the remnants of the pig fat and the uh, olive oil that I put in. Turn it up again. And in goes the broccoli. I like to season the broccoli. Got a little kosher salt on the sidelines here. may need a little extra olive oil. It's uh, looking like it sucked up that pig fat pretty quick. Okay, so you saw I did a quick saute. So now I'm going to cover it. Turn it down just a little bit. That's why it steams. Let's talk a little bit about some of the ingredients. So, Contimo provisions, uh, chili sausage. Uh, we are blessed in downtown Napa with a couple of good purveyors of uh, heritage pork. Uh, we have uh, Contimo, uh, who are in a small uh, uh, storefront kiosk at uh, the Culinary Institute of America at Copia, over on 1st Street on the east side of the river. And then, of course, we have the fatted calf uh, with uh, Taylor and his wife, who has all things pork and prosciutto, lamb, duck. Uh, so uh, I recommend when you do get sausage products, you know, don't buy it from some disgusting corporate uh, yard in North Carolina where the pigs are treated like crap. And, uh, you know, you want heritage pork, uh, you know, acorn fed, uh, free range, no GMA, GMO, no hormones. So you want that. Then on the Barilla Protein Plus, I'll try not to set the box on fire while I'm talking about it, uh, but it's got some good nutritional values, uh, 190 calories per serving, 
uh, you've got uh, four grams of uh, fiber and uh, 10 grams of protein. So I like them. I get them for about $2 a box from Amazon. Can't beat them. Get a half a dozen boxes. Uh, I usually get rotini, penne. I don't think they carry oritichietti. They do have spaghetti. I haven't seen linguine. Uh, spaghettini is kind of useless unless you're going to make it uh, with uh, beans or lentils in a crock pot. Okay, so let's see how our broccoli is doing. It looks like it's doing pretty good. I think I'm going to throw in a little bit more olive oil. Looks like it's getting a little dry. Evidently, I don't need a pot holder. I haven't taken my fingerprints off yet. Uh, by the way, um, I'd love for some feedback on how the video, uh, the audio is working on this. I've got a uh, Shure uh, MV88 Plus uh, mic attached to my iPhone. And uh, I'd love to know how you're getting my audio. I do have a little jazz in the background. I'm doubting that you pick, can pick that up because I've got the mic pointed towards me, not pointed towards my TV. Okay, so now I'm going to get to the pasta. So I always have a little salt pig at the ready. There we go. And I like kosher salt. I usually use, I think, uh, uh, diamond crystal. Uh, there, that's another one you can get off Amazon pretty easily. And you definitely want to make sure you put enough salt in the water. So my water is off camera. It's boiling. Uh, So I just added some kosher salt. I didn't add too much because I can always add it more, but I can't take it out. And my box of pasta said 9 to 11 minutes. So here's the farfalle at the ready. If it says 9 to 11 minutes, I'm putting my timer on 8. So that way, when it gets to eight minutes, I can taste it for al dente-ness, and I could taste it for uh, saltiness. Enough salt, hopefully not too much salt. So, there it goes. I got my handy-dandy little screen for mixing it. I didn't lose any fingerprints uh, maneuvering with the uh, with the top of the water pot. So now, still have fingerprints. Looks like I can turn this way down. A 
Broccoli is still pretty al dente. You can see it's still got its green color. You know, bright green. It's not that sick, dead, dark green yet. I'm going to turn it way down. Okay. And we got the sausage back again. So, sausage goes back in. And I have a Pyrex for putting in my leftovers, so I do get away with only one Pyrex and not multiple Pyrexes. So let's marry up the broccoli and the sozicha. Now, when I uh, take the farfalle and I pull up the colander, I am not going to be that concerned with uh, removing all the water. I'm going to happily take that colander and just quickly dump it, uh, dump the farfalle into this pan so that way I can get some of that glutinous water to add to my sauce here because as you could see I there's not a lot of ingredients in the sauce there was a little salt with the broccoli there's whatever seasoning is in the sausage you can see I've got it turned way down I got 404 four minutes and 42 seconds before the water is uh, done let me check on the saltiness and the al dente-ness. I know it's not going to be al dente yet. Okay, so we're going to give that a taste. Thank goodness, not too salty. It's going to definitely need all of its three and a half more minutes. I think I can add a little bit more salt to the pasta. And that's pretty ideal. That's where you want to be. You don't want to say, oh crap, I put in too much salt in the pasta. Because then there's not much you can do about it. Okay, so that is done. Again, this is a go-to dish. Uh, I like to make this dish. Uh, now, on the greens, so let's review. On the greens, my first choice is broccoli rabi. My second uh, choice is cavolo nero, Tuscan kale. Uh, my third choice would be broccoli. My fourth choice would be uh, spinach, although spinach is a, a little weak. Um, I think collard greens, collard greens are better, you know, with beans. Uh, they're just a little too robust for this application. And on the uh, sausage, you can use uh, either the uh, Italian sweet fennel sausage, or in this case, the... Uh, Calabrian chili pepper sauces. They have other flavors. God forbid, you know, you try to use, you know, apple, chicken, sage sausage and all that. Don't try any of those gimmicky, fancy pants, make-believe sausages. I mean, this is really what you need to do. Uh, and again, remember, Orichietti is your pasta of choice on this one, the ear-shaped pasta. Usually, if you could get rustichella, rustichella is always the best. Uh, Del Verde, I think, is the second best. Uh, uh, De Chico's is uh, 
is decent and it's available, uh, which makes it very attractive that it's available. And as you could see, I wasn't real religious about it. I had farfalle. That's what I used. I'm going to check on my pasta one more time. Check it out. Good on the salt. 45 seconds. Still perfectly al dente. I personally don't mind if it's a little overly al dente. That doesn't bother me. By the way, a little commentary on the uh, on the pan. You know, you might get away with a three quart, uh, but you don't have enough real estate in there uh, to mix everything, as you will see readily. All right, we have some sound effects. The timer is ready to go. Turn off the water. I'll keep the uh, the heat on low for the sausage and the broccoli. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. I'm going to drag the pasta pot over next to the sausage and broccoli pot. I'm going to quickly lift the farfalle and throw it in so I get a little bit of the glutinous water. Okay, so this is an important technique that Italian chefs use, at least Neapolitan chefs. You just pour the pasta right in the saucepan and toss it like a salad. Okay, the American way many times is too much sauce. The pasta is swimming in the sauce. It's, the sauce is pooling at the bottom. So we just want to toss it good from the bottom. Now it's looking like something. Okay, so now we're going to throw some Pecorino Romano right in the pot. Turn it on as low as you can. I'm turning it way down. Still got some heat, but it's pretty low. So toss it with the cheese in it. Now make a note with the cheese. You know, go to a place like Lunardi's or, you know, whatever Italian specialty store you can go to and get Pecorino Romano, not Parmesan. And if you can, get uh, Locatelli brand, Locatelli. Like Father Locatelli, uh, the head guy uh, at Santa Clara, you know, back in the day. Locatelli Pecorino Romano. It's really much better to grate than um, Parmesan. With Parmesan, you should just be eating that by the chunk. So, okay, so now
a lot of special effects. I cover it just for a minute, let it sit. So now I'm going to plate it. Might as well toss it a little bit more. Blend all the flavors. Good way to get your broccoli. My chief elf, Ellen, does not know that I'm making this today. I think she'll be pleasantly surprised. There you go. A little bit more Pecorino Romano on the plated portion. And if you want to, you can do a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil on the top. So anyway, why was I crazy enough to go live on this video? Uh, you know, if I did a regular video, it might have been too big to post. I still got to figure that out. So I might as well just go live. So I'll be posting this video. Uh, it is practical. You can follow the directions and become an expert Neapolitan chef yourself. I am very thankful that I grew up in uh, Frank and Nancy Pinto's household. They both were excellent cooks. Uh, they gave me my palate, and when my cousin Giannino Pinto told me I go out to restaurants too much, uh, he said you should cook. I started cooking, and lo and behold, I knew how to do it. That was back in 1994. So again, uh, please give me some feedback on the uh, on the audio, and uh, um, and in addition to being a home chef, I am a real estate broker. So if you're looking to buy, sell, exchange, lease, what have you. By land, build, build an ADU, accessory dwelling unit, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll help you uh, do that. Thanks a lot.